kicking off this video by saying off no absolutely not it's not happening what you're reading in the title the thumbnail no it's not happening but for the sake of bringing it up we are bringing it up here on the youtube channel and I can't believe we're actually talking about this, man. Elliot Friedman, buddy, what are you doing? Coming in with the scoops that just kind of chip away at my inner self-esteem over here. So, we're talking about the Minnesota Wild today, and no, we're not talking about the Vancouver Canucks and their elimination of the Minnesota Wild in the play-in series in the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs. No, we're not talking about that. Instead, we're talking about a few guys whom the Minnesota Wild actually have, and that actually have been garnering some value around the league, perceivably, at least. We're talking about Jonas Brodeen, and we're talking about Matt Dumba. Now, before Jonas Brodeen ended up getting a contract extension, which eliminates him from this entire discussion now, these two are guys that many people thought the Minnesota Wild would actually have on their trading block, and earlier it was actually confirmed that Matt Dumba was a guy, that they were actively shopping a right-handed defenseman who can get upwards of 20, 30, maybe 40 points in a season. He had 50 points one year. That was awesome. The next year after that, he had 22 points in 32 games, which is really good, points per game-wise. However, this most previous season, he kind of dipped off 24 points, 60 games played. Not great compared to before. He's a guy who is 26 years old, and his contract goes until 2023 at $6 million a year. He's a right-handed guy. And the Vancouver Canucks have two right-handed defensemen who need contracts in Setcher and Tanev. So... Ultimately, there is an idea there that the Vancouver Canucks may see value in getting a right-handed D. And let's face it, they're not the only team the people have been talking about could be a trade target. There's been a lot of Leafs talk with Dumba because, of course, there have been fans all over the league talking about whether or not Dumba would be a fit or not for their team. But we have some tweets over here talking about just what exactly it would take. And leading off this conversation, we're going to go to Satir Shaw and talk about what he said on Sportsnet 650. Matt Dumba, if he is not the Canucks' top trade target, he's among their top targets this offseason. As I understand it, they'll take a run at him. I don't think their first offer is going to be Brock Besser. <sighs> Oh my goodness, it's always Brock Besser to Minnesota, and we'll get into why that is in a little bit, but this is what the tweet says. I don't think their first offer is going to include Brock Besser. They will inquire to the Wild if they have not already. Besser is a guy the Wild will probably ask for. That's who they asked for when the Canucks talked to them about Jason Zucker over a year ago, but what I gather now is that the Canucks would try to make that deal without giving him up initially. So, that's speculation from Satir Shaw. The Canucks probably would want to go after Dumba, if not actually have Dumba as their number one trade priority. And if it's Brock Besser being included, they probably would not want to do it since they already rejected the Wild from getting Besser one time. Here's a tweet over talking about just exactly why is it the Minnesota Wild would want a Brock Besser. This is a conversation over here on TSN 1200 about the Minnesota Wild. They have an internal mandate, similar to Montreal, to get Minnesota players onto their team. They've made mistakes in the past that they don't want to repeat. Skipping on Brock Besser in 2015 and trading away Nick Letty are two of those mistakes. Now, we'll remember what happened in that 2015 NHL entry draft. The Minnesota Wild had the chance to take the hometown boy Brock Besser playing out of the Waterloo Blackhawks and a guy who actually proved himself as a pretty good prospect heading into the draft. Instead, though, at 20th overall, they took Joel Eriksson Ek, who, to his credit, has been an NHL caliber player and who has played his fair share of NHL time, getting 30 points in 62 games this past season but he's no Brock Besser because Brock was taken three picks after a 23rd overall by the Vancouver Canucks. And we haven't looked back ever since. Continuing on with this idea of Minnesota wanting to bring in Minnesota guys, they were talking about the Nick Bugstad trade because he was a guy who's from Minnesota. He played for the University of Minnesota. That's kind of why he was on this conversation here. 
Here's an interesting point over here though. McGuire adds that Minnesota has bombed on a lot of drafts because they didn't know Minnesota. He adds that Oshie and Niskanen are two other Minnesotans they passed on in the draft. McGuire says, you need to be an expert in your own region. The Canucks are a good example of a team being experts in their region. And just to be clear, when McGuire says that you have to be an expert on your own region, he doesn't mean the Habs should be only drafting players from Quebec. He means players playing in, say, Blainville, Drummondville, Victoriaville, etc. They can be from the Maritimes and be on Shawinigan's roster. And to this point, on a little tangent, before we go back to Brock Besser in Minnesota, McGuire, what are you talking about? The Canucks an expert in their own region? Take a look at who the Canucks have on their roster that's actually from BC. It's Vertanen, who was a sixth overall bust. Well, okay, no, not bust, but like, you know, he's not really as good as people thought he would be. And Troy Stetcher, who was a guy who came here in free agency as a college free agent. Because the best players on the Vancouver Canucks, Elias Pettersson and Hughes, are from BC. No, just kidding, they're not. They're from Sweden and Florida. What do you mean the Canucks are experts at scouting their own region? We don't have any players from BC over here other than Vertan and Stetcher and Jordy Ben. And that guy might not even be here next season. So, okay, we'll just leave it at that. Apparently, the Canucks are experts in their own region because they're able to get Vancouver-born products and put them into the team. But if it indeed is not Brock Besser that they want to explore a trade for when it comes to Matt Dumba, and we've been talking about Besser rumors for a while, which is why we included it here in this video. Let's take a look at what Elliot Friedman said as to what actually would allow the Canucks to enter this Dumba conversation now here. Elliot Friedman thinks, Satcher Demko allows the Canucks to enter the Dumba trade negotiations, but him alone is not going to get Dumba. Huh? Elliot Friedman, man. Oh my gosh, no. No. This is kind of why I said it at the very beginning. It's not going to happen. We're talking about this here because it's a valuable topic to talk about in this community, but I by no means believe this is going to happen. I'll just say it right up here up front right now. You don't think about trading Thatcher Demko, even if you are so confident that Jacob Markstrom is going to be your guy long term. Demko? Nah. Furthermore, the return here, Dumba? Demko and other stuff for Dumba? I can't believe it. Okay, let's go over onto some historical stuff over here. Take a look at what Account for Hockey James wrote about. This is what Michael Russo said on KFAN 103 in February of this year. This is what the price would be for Dumba. The return on him would be a first, a prospect, and a center. So, Thatcher Demko is not one of those. Demko is not a first-round pick, he is not a prospect, and he is not a center. But if this is the apparent return that the Wild would want for a Dumba, count me out! Count me and the Vancouver Canucks out! Well, probably not like me and the Vancouver Canucks, because I'm just a guy sitting here, I'm just a fan. I'm not the Canucks, I'm just a fan. But if you translate everything, let's say instead of it being, I don't know, a first, it is Demko instead. A goalie who is very good and young and who can be a number one guy down the line. A prospect like a Niels Hoaglander or something or a Tyler Madden, we don't have that anymore. But somebody of that value, a Jet Wu or something, I'm not sure. And a center? An Adam Gaudet or something? For Dumba? Nah, man, nah. No, we're not doing that. Unless that center's name is Jay Beagle, unless that prospect's name is, I don't know, Miles Liberati, and unless that first round pick is not a first round pick because the Canucks, they don't have their first this year, they don't want to give up their first next year, it's not happening. It's not happening. And maybe because this was back in February, maybe this idea that Russo said on the radio is not true anymore. Maybe the Wild would be willing to part with Dumba for a little bit less. I don't know. But still, if Besser is the first guy they want to get in there, then no. If Demko only gets them started on that, then no. Sure, if you're trading Demko for Connor McDavid, you do it. But Matt Dumba is a $6 million right-handed defenseman with term who can get points until he doesn't get points, and then when he doesn't get points, he doesn't really do anything else all too well. And if you're getting rid of Thatcher Demko and stuff for that, nah fam, we're not doing it. At least, I, I hope we're not. I mean, Satya Shah did say that Dumba would be one of the top priorities, so... 
<sighs> I'm scared. I'm really scared. I'm scared. That's where we're going to end the video off, guys. Talk to me in the comments. Are you scared too? The Wild want Besser. We know that. The Wild regrets skipping Besser. The Wild also are shopping Dumba, and they want a heck of a lot of stuff for him. So much to the point that Elliot Friedman says that if the Canucks, who apparently, according to Satyr Shah, would like Dumba, wanted to get in on Dumba, Thatcher Demko is a starting point. So, let me know in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry, I'm and bye.